friends, how are you all doing? Welcome to Facts and Two Cents. I hope you are hearing me. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you could hear me. Um, hope you guys have had a great weekend. Um, oh, I get some thumbs up, thumbs up um, from Black Queen. Hello, Black Queen, our awesome moderator. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Again, hope you guys have had a great, great, great weekend doing whatever it is you're doing. Um, enjoying, well, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Some crazy stuff that's been going on within our the royal world. So maybe you've just like taken a break and um, been the wise one to just take a break and just leave it all alone. <laughs> You're probably better off for it. So, anyways, hello Church Nelly, how are you? I uh, hope you are doing good. And hello to all of our wonderful, um, uh, wonderful, wonderful squaddies out there in South Carolina. And Church Nelly has given us a whole bunch of links, which is amazing. So just click on her post. Um, this is the Sussex uh, website, um, sussex.com website, Lemonada, where you'll find all of Megan's uh, podcasts, her archetypes podcast, the Diana Awards, where you can see Prince Harry honoring and the honoring the recipients of the Diana Award, the Legacy, Legacy Awards that just happened last week. And also the end of, I mean, Church Shelly, you, you are on it, man. Look at this. Um, the NAACP video where they uh, presented the NAACP slash Archworld Digital uh, Civil Rights Award to Dr. Joy uh, last week oh, happened in Texas. So they did, I guess, I didn't watch the award ceremony. I, I think it came on television. Uh, so I didn't watch the ceremony. So I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't know if it was on the show or not. If it, if it aired already, I don't know. Don't have TV, don't really watch <laughs> award shows. Uh, American Riviera website, you can also find that as well. Uh, and and uh, you can also subscribe. So that way you can get notifications whenever the, Megan decides to really launch this thing. And if you'd like to uh, donate to this channel, Church Nelly put that right up there too. And also off um, pay PayPal me, Church Nelly. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also um, if you are on social media, definitely drop by Spoutable. Um, we're on there. Also on X, but mostly X, I try to use that mostly for Palestine stuff and so and more world news things. Even though I do, you know, most of our squaddies are on X, so I do dabble in there. But most, um, my spoutable is mostly just for royal stuff that I do there. Um, so definitely that's their jump over. And also, if you're looking for merchandise, definitely. Oh, my goodness. Church Nelly, you just, uh, thank you. <laughs> so just draw any of those links you need. Church Nelly's got it on her post. I appreciate it so much. Um, Karen M, our awesome moderator is here. Hello, Karen. Raffaella joining us from uh, Italy. Hello, Raffaella. And Kanitha over here just hanging out with us. And uh, who else is here? Oh, Connie from Switzerland is here. I'm telling you, we have a worldwide audience here. <laughs> I'm assuming Nolothanda would join us from South Africa also. Get um, our peeps from the side of um from the african continent so <laughs> but um really really uh happy you guys are here haven't chat in a while so oh nancy thank you so much oh my goodness i appreciate thank you thank you nancy austin <laughs> i appreciate your generous thank you um let's see let's see let's see let's see uh who else is here um wait black queen <laughs> black queen says i'm in the weight room at the gym oh my goodness i am interrupting your uh training there your workout after pilates and zumba this morning it feels so fantastic to be back after almost seven weeks of bronchitis my spirit has been restored i am so happy you are back to your back to yourself black queen i hope you enjoy your zumba and uh pilates class I took one, uh, actually, I think I took Pilates twice. Oof, that is a lot. <laughs> so I'm I'm telling you, I bowed out to you, man. I haven't done Zumba yet, but uh, Pilates is intense. Um, <laughs> it's good, though. So I'm happy you're enjoying your Pilates and Zumba classes. <laughs> uh, let's see who else is here. Patricia is here, and Janice is here, and Sonia, and Dawn, and Emily is here. Hello, guys. 
Um, and we will, oh, Sonia is here. Kanitha, I think we said Kanitha before. But um, anyways, we'll say hi, hello to everyone else as we go along. But our faves, I'm telling you, Texas, <laughs> Harry and Meghan's Texas trip just keeps giving and giving and giving and giving. It is beautiful. Of course, we know they were in Uvalde visiting um, John Martinez's family, his mom's birthday. So John, uh, the last few days, uh, posted uh, some birthday pics because he said, my mom wanted me to post these as her birthday pics because that's her, that's a mom in the green outfit there next to Megan. And I swear, if you look at her and Megan's face, they could, they literally look like they're related. I'm like, these two could be from the same family because Megan, you can just sort of place her into she I mean, she could um, pass as Latina. She could pass as Italian. She could, you know, biracial black you know black white i mean you can fit her into any one of the any one of these groups and she could fit right in and so when you look at the picture on the left with her, um john's mom and megan they literally look like they could be sisters i was just like oh my goodness no wonder megan fit into this family so well <laughs> And her and Harry, it's just like Mega, um, John's mom's sister brought home her husband. <laughs> and the bottom right picture and the gentleman in the back is John's grandpa um, in the photo. And I, oh, I forgot to post it. Since his mom had, you know, had him post her pictures, the dad wants his pictures now. So he posted the photos with his dad and Megan. And then his dad made a t-shirt with him and Megan on the t-shirt. <laughs> And it's hilarious. It is absolutely hilarious. They are just reveling in all this. I mean, but I just, I mean, look at this. It just looked like family. It's just like Megan came home to family and bring her, bring her husband home to hang out with her family. And it just is beautiful. And uh, John at the bottom says the cake was so delicious, by the way, had strawberry filling. And that's the white cake that Megan has in her hand up there. And uh, they were singing happy birthday. And so John is just, <laughs> I think of him as a squatty now, because it just like, you know, he just fills us in. And um, let's just move my little brand there. There we go. Um, and there is Harry and Megan with all the kids. They were at this community center. Of course, we know that they teamed up with um, Kaboom to build the community park. And here they are with um, this park and also the Just Keep Living Foundation, which at the top um, left over there, you can see is an organization that was founded by Camilla and Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey is the actor. And so him and his wife found this organization. So um, they and Kaboom had this day when Megan and Harry were there. They had this community day, I guess. And it says together, um, united we stand, together we build. And so that's what this whole thing was at this community center with all of them there. And Harry, you see Harry hanging out with a group of uh, young ladies there painting and doing just doing community events with the family. And it's amazing again, if you look at the picture, when you look at the pictures, is how all of them just, they just look like family. <laughs> they just fit right into this community and it's just so beautiful. I, I I just I can't and so just um the Just Living Foundation they posted this uh, on Instagram. They says we were so touched that Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duchess of the uh, the Duchess of Sussex, took time out of their busy schedule to connect and visit with Uvalde students and families at Kaboom Family Day is always a blast and our um J. JKL Uvalde kids had a great time giving back to their community. And so it's just, again, such a beautiful, beautiful thing. I, I just, my heart is full. <laughs> you know what I mean? We thought we had all of it last week and then we kept getting more and more and more. And it's just like, I feel like every week we get something else that happened there and it's just all just, it's just beautiful to see. And I just, I absolutely love it. And so, you know, it's so funny because I was thinking even with this and going on to, um, oh, this is more, some more photos with Harry getting all into the painting. <laughs> I was like, I wonder what Harry is painting. It looks like a green and blue heart and something else <laughs> he's painting in his plate. I have no idea, but you know, it would have been interesting to see what it is he ended up painting. <laughs> I just, I love it. I love it. It's just great. Um, 
but it just, you know, it kind of takes me when I started thinking about that and just how Harry and Megan just all about building community and working together with other people to do things. Part of me is thinking because Megan is, you know, what it looks like, as you can see on the left, this is what I forgot to um you know, the screenshot, I forgot to get the last episode, what some of the things that's involved with um, American Riviera Orchard is like, as you can see, there are 41s like downloadable cookbooks, um, recipe books, tableware, namely knives and forks and spoons and table cutleries and jams and marmalade and fruit preserves and uh, all of this stuff, vegetables, legumes. I'm assuming the Sussexes have a... Um, garden, I'm sure. They, actually, they do, because when uh, Harry and Meghan docu-series, we actually saw a video of uh, Meghan and her sister and her niece and the kids in a garden. So, you know, all of this stuff, dairy, um, dairy-based spreads and nut butters and fruit butters and all of this stuff, uh, linen and textile and gift wrap and fabric and all of this stuff that they're going to be selling from this store, I'm assuming a virtual store, whatever. I was wondering if Megan is going to be doing all of these or if she's going to be teaming up with other, maybe some other um, independent, uh, female-owned, you know, small businesses in, a San, um, in Santa Barbara, and they come together and create like this collective for the, to do this. I wasn't sure. And I was, you know, I was just thinking like how she works and how they work and how they work as a collective and how they work as a community. And so I was like, is she going to be doing all of this stuff by herself? Or is she going to be teaming up with some really small businesses in the community? Kind of like what she did with Clever, but I mean, Clever is their standard standalone business, but will she be teaming up with you know maybe her other friends and, and other small businesses in santa barbara and because again this is american riviera which is santa barbara and so you know i'm assuming they're going to be doing wines and all of that stuff are they going to be teaming up with some lesser known winery in san you know in california to or in the santa barbara area there to put this all together and work together to do this i don't know but i was just kind of imagining what this could be and who would be involved and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's what this is about um, and if that's how she's going to work because that's how they love to work. And so I'm like, that would be actually kind of cool to bring in some smaller businesses as well and work together with, um, with them. And they all, you know, come together and do this. So I, I don't know. I would be very interested. I'm very excited. I'd be very excited when she starts really posting um, or her team, I'm assuming is not a personal Instagram, but a business Instagram. So it'd be interesting what ends up happening with it. And so, yeah, but um, I, you know, <laughs> one day I'll be able to afford a, you know, a knife or a fork. <laughs> This is very high end stuff. So <laughs> I'm assuming, like, you know, $50 for a jar of jelly or something. So that's my thinking. But, um, but it'll be very, really exciting. I, I, I can't wait. And, and as of when did I scan this? I think early yesterday. I mean, I put together this whole thing to do yesterday and wasn't able to do it yesterday. But when I scanned this yesterday, it was uh, 501,000 followers so far. And so I didn't look at it today. So I don't know where it is today. But when I scan this again, you know, after two or two days, it's uh, um, almost it's like over half a million people subscribe to something that they have no idea what it's going to be about or what it, you know, what specifically all the specifics about it. We still don't know. We don't even know when she's going to start, you know, when this whole thing is going to be launched and all of that stuff. We have no idea. So, <laughs> but we all wait with bated breath, along with all the people in the UK who claim to hate her. All of them are following this. All of them are following this, apparently. Very, very funny. Barbara Lane, thank you so much for your super sticker. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Where is this thing before? Oh, oh, here we go. Thank you, Barbara. 
much appreciated so very much looking forward to that so if you have not subscribed or it and you're looking to subscribe just click on church nelly's post church nelly at the top of the very top of the chat has the links to just about everything sussex and fact uh, facts and two cents related so if you need a link it's right there church nelly has it right there hey you, elaine parker i see you there how are you doing and lola love and mjb there and perlina hi guys <laughs> welcome welcome um what else is happening well of course with <laughs> as we know as with everything that megan does there is always pearl clutching on the other side even though <laughs> you know it's ridiculous even though it's utterly utterly ridiculous so um uh that they should be doing or saying anything about the sussexes when we know that those on Shutter Island do worse. So I'm just going to move my banner here so we can read this thing. It's a little bit lengthy, but we're going to read it. But it is just, it's absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. You know, um, I just, <laughs> it's like, come on, people, really? So British Vogue um, touched on it with, because of course, Megan, you, um, her, her her name is Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. That is her married name. But of course, people on Shutter Island are clutching their pearls and their knickers rolls in a twist. How could you use your title? How could you use your royal title and um, be putting it with commercial uh, endeavors? You are going back on your word for the queen. You are disrespecting the queen. You know, the whole nonsense that they all come up with. So British Vogue uh, tackled it this week and it says, uh, the royal family have been lifestyle influencers for centuries. So why is Meghan Markle being criticized for American Riviera Orchard? The notion that royalty can never be separate, can ever be separated from social and cultural influence is absurd. I mean, everybody else and their mother with a brain knows that, but it seems those on Shutter Island, those royalists on Shutter Islands have missed the boat and they didn't get the call and they or they didn't get the, the, the email when this all went out or the text maybe. Uh, she has historian uh, Garrett Russell, uh, royal support and royal patronages have huge clout. Obviously, as you as you enter the 20th century, this role of influencer is complicated by the issue of potential commercial gain. But really, if you look at things like the Duchy of Cornwall, hello, that Prince William have right now, that Prince Charles used to have, which has been incredibly successful with its range of organic food, what the Duchess of Sussex is doing is essentially no different to any other member of the royal family, including the most senior members, i.e. the Queen and uh, now King Charles. What the former Prince of Wales did with his duchy originals is a modern take on something that has existed since the 15th century. In fact, the royal warrant. Then, as now, tradespeople competed with each other for the monarch's patronage, and those given the official seals of approval were able to leverage it for profit. Their um, leverage to profit their business. The first official royal warrants were bequeathed by the Lord Chamberlain in the, in the 1400s. And by the 1700s, businesses were proudly putting the royal seal on their stationery and above their premises. And it goes on and on and on. And a little bit more, it says, an outbuilding on the grounds of the Queen, um, Queen's I'm sorry, an outbuilding on the grounds of a queen's mother's former home, the Castle of May, was restored and reopened as a bed and breakfast called the Granary by her beloved grandson, Charles, in 2019, while Prince William now rents out holiday cottages on the Duchy of Cornwall, which he now has, complete with saunas, log burners, heated swimming pools, etc. They have actually, a, it seems like a more than more than a couple of, uh, you know, bed and breakfast things that they have. Of course, as they say, you know, we've known forever. They have the, the Dutchie originals. They, they uh, tons of um, commercial properties that the Duchy of Cornwall has. I mean, King Charles created a whole village of homes that are for commercial purpose, purposes, along with a ton of other things that they rent out all with the royal seal and the royal seal of approval. And they were talking also too about the warrants that tons of companies in the US and the UK have, and they gladly and proudly put on their royal seals on it. So that's why British Vogue is like, 
you are clutching your pearls for what exactly? When the royal family and their, you know, special people and a lot of people they have the that have these royal warrants, apparently the royals can get free stuff from them all the time. <laughs> of course, I give your warrant and I get to get, you know, some free cars and some free whatever, like Land Rover, I think is one of the companies where they get free stuff from, like free cars. Um, maybe I think uh name, I think the one that King um Prince Philip passed away when he did his coffin and the Land Rover thing, I think was part of that. But they have all of this stuff where they get free stuff where they give out these warrants with the royal seal. So it's like, stop being stupid and hypocritical. We know this stuff. This is out there. This nonsense about clutching your pearls about Meghan using her title and something is ridiculous when the royals do it all the time, i.e. <laughs> and this is only a smidgen of the stuff they do. I mean, the first one at the top, those are Dutchie originals, where it's cookies and crackers and wines and stuff like that. And they also have like jams and jellies and butter and all of that stuff that comes from the Dutchie, the Dutchie of Cornwall. Again, oh, this is all stuff that Prince Charles, as he was the Prince of Wales, developed all of this stuff. William just as it inherited all of this stuff. You can find all this stuff at Waitrose. I think they have now a deal with Waitrose that's sold at Waitrose. Um, as you can see, Dutchy originals from Waitrose. Um, we, we've talked about this forever. The Queen having her own brand of sauce and ketchup. <laughs> if you thought I was joking, I'm not. <laughs> It's there. She also had socks and I couldn't find the socks one. But later on, like you see 2020 at the bottom, right at the bottom of the sauce, she had her gin. She created this gin and actually liked the bottle. <laughs> and I don't drink, but uh, I love the bottle. But they created, you see the copyright, Her Majesty the Queen in 2020. She had a gin. Even Fergie had her. And all of these, by the way, are have their seal of royal seal on them. You know, and even Fergie jumped in, has been, well, not has been, but she's this whole time using her title in her books, Sarah Ferguson, Duchess of York, Mom, a most intriguing lady, did not even realize she was a Times bestseller, but there you go, was a Times bestseller, using her title, all of these people and all the others use their title all the time. Nobody says a word except when Megan uses her title. Her married title. Fergie isn't married anymore. She is divorced, but she still gets to use her Duchess of York's title to sell her books and nobody says a word about it. So again, the whole hypocrisy about Meghan, when if the queen could use her title to be selling ketchup and brown sauce, <laughs> I don't care what Meghan sells. She could use her title on it. I mean, seriously? unbelievably silly kate and william from their favorite day on um, tabloid back in 2014 kate and wills inc the duke and duchess secretly set up companies to protect their brand just like the beckhams they also had harry involved in all this mess as well uh well not mess but it's actually good business but they were doing it nobody was uh you know pulling twisting their knickers about it um a uh, new firm protects image, I'm sorry, new firm protects image rights uh, through Palace, insist, sorry, though Palace insists they're dormant. Uh, photos of Kate and William, I'm sorry, you can move away from that. Um, at the bottom, oh, it says Kate, Kate's firm is called C.E. Strathern and William is APL Anglesey. So I guess those are the firms that they set up. And it, the little blurb about it says, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge has secretly set up firms to protect their brand and intellectual property rights in a move more often associated with celebrities such as David and Victoria Beckham. They have told lawyers to establish companies in each of their names. It will enable William and Kate to what? to sell officially endorsed products <laughs> and take action against anyone selling items that could harm their image. So they have rights to sell officially endorsed, i.e. using their titles and the weight of the monarchy behind it to sell officially endorsed products. But y'all are clutching your you know, pearls and twisting your knickers because Megan is setting up something using her title, which is her right. It is her married name. 
So if they can use theirs, why can't she? So, I mean, it's all just so ridiculous. And so, <laughs> and just, I'm glad the Sussexes are not even paying attention to this. And I'm glad they're not even answering any of the nonsense. But as Church Nelly says, the hypocrisy of the British media is unbelievable. I mean, it. <laughs> somebody needs to send these people some mirrors. They need this. I mean, I just, I don't, the level of hypocrisy there is just, it's unreal. Like, I, my goodness. And so the whole weekend, that's been, you know, when they start complaining, like, oh my gosh, people are against Kate, well, um, especially Kate. How could you be attacking her or whatever? The majority of the articles, the majority of people going after them has been pointing out their hypocrisy. That's been the majority of the things that you will see. People clipping articles like this and many others of the hypocrisy, they weren't twisting their niggas there, you know, they were reporting that, yes, they set up companies to protect their, it's good business. And they can sell stuff and they can, you know, endorse, they can sell officially um, endorse stuff and they can take action if somebody tried to ruin their image. That's just good business. So I have no idea and understand what they what they are thinking. Like, why should Megan not be able to use her married name? It's her name. It doesn't, you can't do anything about it. It's her name. She can use it anyhow she wants. And this idea, like, oh my gosh, she's going against the queen's wishes. Well, uh, I'm sorry, you have a king that is gone against the king, uh, the queen's wishes. And no, none of you have said a word about it. Camilla, the queen never said Camilla should be named Queen Camilla ever. She said queen consort. Nobody's complaining that King Charles went against the queen's wishes. So if Meghan goes against the queen's wishes, so what? <laughs> I mean, not to be crass, but the queen is dead. At this point, it's like, look, <laughs> King Charles to do it, you know, why shouldn't Meghan? And it's not like she's going against the queen. Again, this is her legal married name. She can use it however she wants to. That's like somebody coming to tell you that you they, you have to do what they say and how to use your married name. I mean, like, hello, hello. And of course they're doing that because, you know, they wouldn't do it against any others in the royal family, even the Tyndalls and all of them, they all use their connections and their, their you know, association with the royals to sell themselves. Nobody complains about it. But we know why they're complaining with Megan, you know, a little bit of black blood and making money. Oh, <laughs> that's all you need to do. They'll be all up in your pocket. Unbelievable. Um, what else is happening? And you know, talking about <laughs> um, over the weekend, we well, last week, really, the end of last week, we had uh, um, Prince Harry, obviously doing um he was with the diana Awards. he did uh he called in and uh you know was just meet met with the group and they had such a really incredible conversation he finding out about them and what they're doing and how they're impacting the world and whatever i mean if you look at that and the, the couple of seconds i saw of william's speech and it's just like oh no dude you have to be a little more you know with the people not just speaking at them but to them but it's a, such a mass difference between how the two of them related to the uh, young people that were part of them. I mean, Harry was speaking to them, you know, thousands of miles away and speaking to them and having a conversation with them, as opposed to William being in person and speak kind of speaking at them. And so the whole thing was like, oh my gosh, you know, how could Megan release and, and you know, put out or, or soft launch her business while William is speaking? How dare she? And it's kind of like, well, is he, if Megan soft launching, not she didn't say anything. It's not even on Sussex.com. People found the thing on Instagram. You know, if that could, you know, really knock your king, your future king off the new cycle, then the issue isn't Megan, it's you. It's, it's you guys, I mean, you don't have, Megan didn't beg you to come focus on her launch. You could have still stayed focusing on your future king, but you chose not to. You chose not to focus on him, but to focus on Megan. And if you focused on him and really be, was really touting and, and promoting his speech, maybe, they would have more views. I mean, just looking at, you know, when I clip this from um, um, their, you know, 
the tele well just use the telegraph and the, the the times they had little clips up of showing william and his speech and also harry calling in and look at the difference in views <laughs> i mean how many harry had no problem with his wife soft launch um her business while you know he was talking to the people there and you look at the difference in views. I mean, William only has 6.4 thousand views with the Telegraph, six uh, and 9.4 with the Times. Look at Harry, 18.18 thousand views. I mean, you know, it's not Megan's fault. People just don't care about William. What William has to say, and that's just what it is. And you can't be telling people they should be putting their life on hold because your future king is speaking. I mean, seriously. Harry and Meghan learned how to walk and chew gum at the same time. So what if Harry was doing Diana stuff? Meghan could also do her stuff. I mean, you can do two things at the same time or two things on the same day. You know, so it just is so ridiculous. Maybe I should be focused on your business and leaving, leaving the Sussexes alone to focus on theirs. Maybe more people would be care about William if you focused on him and leave the Sussexes alone. You know, again... Megan didn't even launch anything. We found the thing. People found it, and all of a sudden, it was like, oh, Megan, that's Megan. We it wasn't even, we weren't at first even sure it was hers. But, you know, later on, the press, as it's a lot of them in the UK press started contacting the Sussex's office to find out if it was theirs. And they confirmed yes, but they didn't really launch anything. So, <laughs> so if, if a person didn't even launch something and that is um, overshadowing your future king, your problem isn't with the person launching something. The problem is your future king. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody cares to listen to him. So there you go. <laughs> Just unbelievable. He's silly. And, oh gosh. And then we're still at this place. You know, we've been talking about this thing since last year with all the photoshopping. And would you believe, even though we've been talking about this photoshopping since last year, when this came out, what was it, last April, with this messy photoshop with this with the queen and all her great-grandchildren, which the press was using as a, um, that she cared, you know, she didn't want to be with um, Harry and Meghan's kids. And they were making all of these comments about, oh, how, uh, you know, basically intimating that, Harry and Meghan's kids, uh, Prince Archie and Prince Lily, weren't that important to the queens. And here she is with all of her grandkids, the white ones that she cares about, which of course, you know, the, I'm sure the queen does not have any of that sort of thinking. But um, uh, but this is the kind of the narrative that the media was pushing. And we've been talking about this photo since it came out last year. And we were talking about it last week too. Last, I think last episode we were talking, you know, reviewing. Just, I mean, I only literally only focused on the lighting, but there are a whole bunch of uh, other I issues with this image, which also looks like maybe the queen wasn't even there. Because if you look at some of the cuts in this edit, I mean, it just is ridiculous. Where it literally looked like they cut and pasted, maybe cut and pasted the king, the queen, and cut and pasted a couple of the kids. We know Louis wasn't there. <laughs> and it's just ridiculous. And again, the copyright to this photo was Kate. And so they, this was whole thing was, oh, look at the queen and her white grandkids. And they were glorying in this beautiful photo. And again, when I saw it, I, you know, I didn't look into it. I just thought, oh, cute, the queen went with her grandkids and or great grandkids. And that was what, but more and more people started looking into it. It's like, wait a minute, there are problems with these photos. And then I looked, I was like, oh. <laughs> and then so the last couple of days, I was looking at it even closer. It's like, there are things that I saw that I didn't even see the first time I looked at it. And I started investigating it. Would you believe none of the British press really picked up on this? The only thing they picked up on was the bottom left when the Daily Mail, because just about everybody and their brother on, on X, Twitter at the time, were calling out this picture, complaining that it was photoshopped. The only thing that happened was, as you can see at the bottom, the Daily Mail, which we talked about before, went after Chris Boozy for calling this out. And why? It says the tech CEO, Christopher Boozy, who appeared in Harry and Meghan's Netflix series, sparked backlash by saying, Kate's portrait of the queen and her grandchildren at Balmoral is photoshopped. 
And you can see that was April 24th. That's what, um, the, the, the picture, I think, came out on the 23rd. And from the time this photo came out, everyone was like, this is Photoshopped. And the only press that this got was the Daily Mail going after Chris Boozy and attacking, and their royal reporters attacking anyone who called out this picture as being Photoshopped. Flash forward to today or yesterday, the Observer, which is part of the Guardian, people question anything now, how Kate's photo scandal rips uh, up the rules of royals and in the media. And one of part of the article was this photo that they brought up. And they brought up and they their people at the Guardian or the Observer looked into this photo and indeed found all of this Photoshopping. <laughs> That was in this photo. And they found stuff that I didn't even notice with the girl on the, um, on the left of that photo, her hair. And you can see some parts where they're like, like somebody needed to have put on their glasses when they were, well, because again, when you're Photoshopping, you have to zoom in because you could miss things. And it seemed that that person, Kate, well, this is her photo. It's her copy. It's her, she copyrighted as hers. So I would have to assume she's the one that photoshopped it and the same thing here. And so according to the observer at the top, it says observers, the picture desk can show this weekend that rough edges of the editing process um, were nothing new. The photograph taken by Catherine at Balmoral and released last year to mark what would have been the 97th birthday of the late queen bears similar signs of digital alteration. <laughs> Prince Louis appears to have been moved back into the frame while locks of the great granddaughter's hair show telltale repetition. Back then, though, the image were not urgently killed by the leading international press agencies like the latest one because it didn't matter so much. Well, it mattered. It mattered then. It didn't, you didn't care about it. You guys in the press who should have been looking at this stuff again, this stuff is going into history books. This stuff is stuff that they're collecting for history, that they're giving you this, putting it in the press so that down the road, when the great, great, great grandkids are, you know, grow up or at least could figure this stuff out, they could look back and say, oh, there's my great, where's my grandmother and her great grandkids. Except this moment never happened because it was <laughs> it's just fake and Photoshop and people Photoshopped in there. And the image, I mean, <laughs> it looked like they, the couch was sawed into and they tried to, and they Photoshopped it back to, together. It's just, it's ridiculous the thing they did in here to, to get the shot together. It was all fake. It mattered. They didn't care. They didn't care to, they didn't care that they were lying because again, it's not that they didn't know. We know that they knew. We knew the Daily Mail knew because the day after this photo shot, uh, this photo dropped on April 24th, as you can see with the Chris Boozy's, um, when they attacked Chris Boozy on the April 24th, the day after, this was all over X because we were all talking about it and calling it out. They didn't care. And it's only because now it's an, it made an international stink that they are addressing it. It mattered because people were calling and they were pointing out that this is lie. This was not the truth. You know, it goes on to a little bit more of the article it says, Prince Louis on the far right had been, well, uh, oh yeah, Prince Louis on the far right had been moved back, his shirt stripes were repeated under the front of the arm of the sete, I guess. The cabling on, um, on the carpet disappeared oddly and his uh, high, and his highly lit head, which is what you see at the top there, his highly lit head has a sharp cut out edge. On the left, the curls of hair of Mia Tyndall are repeated exactly on the Ofro Street, draping as she leans around the head of her baby brother, Lucas. I mean, there were all this, I mean, and that's not all. I mean, they even mentioned the cut where the queen was sitting. You can see the cut. <laughs> it was so evident, the cut again. When you're editing, you have to zoom in. <laughs> you have to zoom in to see <laughs> what you need to be doing and what it looks like. They didn't do that. They just put it out there. And as, because again, Heaven knows how many things have been photoshopped. 
There is a photo of the queen and Prince Philip. One, when they were much later in life, there are two of them they put out. One of them with Prince Philip and the queen sitting, I guess, looking at birthday cards or some kind of cards from the grandkids. And then the other one with them outside of Buckingham Palace. The one outside of Buckingham Palace, I'm not Buckingham Palace, I'm sorry, um, Windsor Castle. They were like, I guess in a courtyard or whatever with the castle thing in the back of them. Clearly photoshopped. Clearly, <laughs> even the queen's hands, you can tell it was a cutout. You're like, oh my God, this is like totally photoshopped. And so when CNN said that they are, um, they are reviewing all of the photos sent to them, I would review all of them too, because again, those were clearly, and from an eye from, I, I don't Photoshop all day, so there are a lot of things I will miss. But as a photographer, I do some Photoshopping too. It's like, I, although for me, I mostly deal in light and dark and that either lightening the image or darkening the image. That's usually kind of, you know, like Misan does more black and white. I do more lights. And so other, you know, where I do, for example, take out the background of an image is when you see my thumbnails on this podcast. So you'll see thumbnails that I will drop. Sometimes lately, I've just been dropping them on the sort of reddish orange background. But sometimes I will take out the background because I don't want the background, whoever showed. I just want the person. And so that is a form of Photoshop where you just take out the background of it and you can put it anywhere. And you can give it a different background if you want. I do a lot of creative stuff like that, um, you know. But again, my thing is more creative. I'm not giving that to an official, like, this is an official uh, historical document. We should know the difference. It, the things I would say or write, would, you know, just for creatively would be very different probably from if I'm saying like I'm filling out an official document for the government or I'm putting on something official that will go down in history so generations will think it's the truth. I know it's the truth. Very, very different. <laughs> and they seem to have just mastered the art of just lying their way through things and they don't care if it's official document or if it's just creative. Nobody cares if you're just Photoshopping a photo to put on Instagram just to show off. Nobody cares. Just about everybody does that. You could creatively do whatever you want with a photo. Just don't use it as an official document that will go down in history <laughs> as a representation of your perfect family. That's where the problem is. And so a lot of these things, people just assume the Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace was being honest. We were calling it out since, again, this big photo. This same day, people were calling out. The next day is when I kind of, you know, was like, oh, this is, a, you know, a problem. We talked about it since then, since back in April last year and reviewed it again. Yesterday was the first time people have seriously sat there and written and like, oh, yeah, there's a problem with this photo. And only because that mess happened last year, that mess happened last week. And so what is happening now? The, everything now with the royals are getting community notes on X. If you know what community notes is, it's like when there's something bogus or fake article or fake, you know, like AI video or whatever that people are passing off as real, they get community notes that is like, uh, that's fake. That's not, that's not true. <laughs> Case in point yesterday, Matt Wilkinson, who is Matt Sun Royal, he is a reporter, one of those reporters from The Sun, liars in every way. He puts out this article yesterday that, of course, Kate was outdoors. And he put this photo with Kate in a red jacket and jeans or whatever and claimed that she was at a farm and then they went off. As you can see, well, let's read his, his post yesterday. Princess of Wales had been seen out and about in public this weekend, spending Saturday shopping and Sunday watching her children play sports in Windsor. Full story on the Sun Online and or go buy a paper. And you see that, and you know, Kate is out there looking fresh and healthy in her red jacket tonight. Yes, you know, I am back. I am looking fresh and, you know, fabulous. And um, and also, look at, so look at what it says on the actual article. Exclusive princess recovery. Seen out with William at farm. First public trip ends web rumors. Kate outdoors in bold letters with this, you know, beautiful red jacket and all of that stuff, except look at the community notes. And even before community notes, 
happened, the moment this dropped, everyone was calling it out. And why were they calling it out? Community notes at the bottom. This post and the accompanying image are misleading. The photo of Kate used here is from last autumn. <laughs> <laughs> Kate was not seen by any verified source and there are no photographs of her public trip. Again, as if last week whole debacle didn't happen, as if the press, the photo, you know, the press photo agency that pulled the photo and that killed photo didn't specifically lay out their guideline calling out the press for using photos that did not go with the story that they, you know, headlines, well, one, they did headlines, you know, that did not go with the substance of the article, but also they're a photo agency. So that includes photos like this that did not go with the article. This, they're claiming that, yeah, Kate was seen. So if you see this photo with this article, you think, oh, this is Kate like, yesterday. She was in a red dress out with her family Saturday and Sunday, except that's a lie. That is manipulative, and that's why community knows happen. This photo is they used the photo from last autumn to claim that this is this is Kate. And not only that, they have no verified source backing any of that stuff. You're gonna tell me in the year 2020, Kate is out there at a mark farmer's market. Everybody is trying to find Kate, and everybody have a phone attached to their fingertips. So she's out with her kids with William and out of the market, and nobody took a photo or video of her at all. And you cannot find one person to put on record who could put their name on record that she was out and about. Nobody is buying this nonsense. Again, they are not a credible source. As the, the person said, they are, think of them right now as Iran or North Korea. Nothing credible coming out of there. So whether Math Wilkinson just made this up or Kensington Palace just blatantly lied about it, whatever, we know this is whole thing is a lie unless they produce video and, <laughs> and, and or and I would say video and photo because we can't trust any photo that they put out. They have to be evidence and they've provided none. Meanwhile, write this huge article with huge headline about Kate being outdoors. Lies. And if you don't want to know who this Matt Wilkinson is, it's the same Matt Wilkinson who last week we talked about this. He's the one who wrote the original story about Meghan Markle's camp branded hypocrites over this um, mis over um, this isn't a mistake Meghan would have made jive at Kate. A snapper pal admits to editing the couple's official pregnancy photo. And we remember we talked about this last week. He's the one that wrote the original article that Misan, as you can see at the bottom, that claim that Misan admits to editing the pregnancy photo, admits to editing in the tree that's in the background there. We did a whole episode about that tree. <laughs> Matt Wilkinson is the first one that wrote that um, article. And then, of course, it was picked up by the Daily Mail and the Telegraph and the others until Misan found out about it and dropped his facts. And then I think uh, the Daily Mail and... Um, and the Telegraph, I think they retracted their thing. And the son has not retracted and he has not apologized. And so Misson was online yesterday, as you can see that little clip on the other side. Matt Wilkinson talking about um, Kate. He says, people keep asking me what really happened to Kate. Well, she's really had she really had a major surgery in January, really said um, she'd take till April to recover, really asked for privacy, really mucked up a Mother Day photo and may choose to be open when she's good and ready, really. So this person, Shane Reaction, responded to him saying, did you retract or apologize to me at Misson Harriman? To which Misson at the bottom there in yellow says, of course he hasn't, nothing at all. He was quick to introduce himself to me at the We Are Invictus Games in Germany, I just realized it was this, it's the same person. So if you all remember uh, at the Invictus Games in Germany, we talked about this when it happened, about this creepy reporter, as you can see at the bottom, this creepy reporter who was sitting in a section right next to, to Harry and Meghan, as you can see him there in circle. Well, that is the same person, Matt Wilkinson. That's the same one from the Times who wrote all of this and lied about Misan and is lying about yesterday. That's him there in circle. 
And you can see Harry and Meghan right there in the next section. It's just very, very close to them. And you can see in the picture, the last picture, him creeping photos of them. So this guy, um, but as you can see, it's September 13th during the games. It says, look who's creeping very close to Prince Harry and Meghan. And that, you know, royal reporter from the sun, Matt W., Matt Wilkinson. I just hope the security is tight, not just for the couple, but for him. H might do something. <laughs> And um, yeah, that's him creeping on them there at um, at the Invictus Games. And um, you know, turns out they they allowed. I mean, he was part of the press. He was part of the Sun. So Harry and Meghan can't tell the Germans who to invite. They you know they are the ones that put on the game. So they invite the press that they that they allow there. But here he is. It's the same Matt Wilkinson that did. And that's why Misson, Misson was saying, yeah, he was quick to introduce himself to me while we were in Germany. And um, it's the same one that, you know, basically lied and put, you know, if God, thank God that Misson had his original to kill that whole lying narrative. But it's the same one that put Misson's career in jeopardy because of this lie. And so it's like, how can you believe any of this? <laughs> this is the same lying person that was writing this about, okay, without any evidence, without any photo, without anything. But yet he puts out this huge Kate outdoors. And it's like, dude, we're in a different time. Nobody believes this nonsense anymore. Nobody is buying this nonsense. And that's why he got community noted. And that's why they clarify that there are no verified sources and no photos, videos at all unbelievable we're not buying this nonsense anymore we have moved on you know and not only that look at <laughs> and i have to go looking for it you know as you can see the that photo with kate and willie um kate uh, that kate took as you can see a photo by the princess this was from uh kensington royal which is kate and william's uh twitter uh twitter page they're the ones that put it up today would have been the late queen elizabeth's 97th birthday this photograph showing her with some of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren was taken at Balmoral last summer and then you look at the community notes at the bottom <laughs> where readers at contact it says this image appeared to have been digitally altered to give the impression that everyone within it was present at the same time it is not a photograph of a moment, rather a, a collage of moments put together to create an illusion of a photograph. And it's just like, yeah, and this is on their website. I mean, they can't take it out because now it's official record. You can't, just like Harry and Meghan have to leave their, had to leave their Sussex Royal there. They can't change it. So it's still there and it's going to stay there with this community notes. Because now everybody knows it's there. If they move it, then it's going to be another boo ha ha over it. So they have to leave it there with your community know, so people know that this was not a moment that happened. It was a bunch of photos that they put together, or yeah, you know, maybe they just photographed the queen and then photographed the kids later, and then Louis maybe another time because obviously he wasn't there when the other people were in this. I mean, any amount of things could have happened with this. But as I said, it is not a photograph of a moment, but rather a collage, a bunch of photos, a collage of moments put together to create an illusion of a photograph. And it's just like, you know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. And again, this is, you see the photo of the princess, the princess of Wales, Kate. And so for the people that are claiming like, oh my gosh, she just made a mistake. She apologized. You know, why are you just hating on her? Can you all just leave the princess alone? Well, no, we can't. <laughs> because again, this is not just a one-time thing. This is a pattern of lying and manipulating. This is a pattern of misleading the public. That is why they are now referred to in the same breath as Iran and North Korea, I will add Israel to this bunch and for a lot of part, America to this bunch of lying, misleading people who are just people who just, you cannot believe to tell you the truth. Well, at least the American government, because the American people are like, no, we're not buying this stuff, stuff that you're selling us anymore. I would say the American government would be part of this and Israel, all of them I would put in this list of people to not trust when they tell you anything without vetting it like a million times before, and even then think about it, you know, <laughs> dead. 
Really, really consider if you want to believe what they tell you. This is the this is where they are. So no, it's not just a simple mistake. No, it's not just a, oh my gosh, you know, she just wanted to put out a little thing about her family. No, this is a person who is lying, who has deliberately made the choice to lie about everything she done. Now, you know, not again, people are going through the queen's photos. Again, the same ones I'm telling you. People are like, because I the one where she and Prince Philip are outside completely looks Photoshopped. We saw the doctor about that when it happened. Even her hands look like they put it in her hands there because I remember when the queen later in life, her hands were black because, uh, you know, I think they said that something happens with your skin when you're that old. I mean, you know, and your skin is just very fragile and all of that stuff that happens to many elderly people. And it looks like they Photoshop her hand. <laughs> I was just like, what are you doing? So, no, this is just a pattern of lying to people. And that's why people aren't trusting. And that's why you have all these crazy conspiracy theory theories out where people are like, I don't trust anything you say. Even if you stand in front of me, I still have not, don't want to trust you. They have no credibility. And that is the problem. It's not a little thing. These are people who are heads of state who have power to, you know, make laws and power to withhold their uh, consent to laws. These are not just any old regular folks just lying. These people have the power to affect people's lives and that's why this matters. And so if you have a press that will not hold them together and not only not to hold them to account and not only not hold them to account, participate in it, as we've seen, including doctoring Megan's images, like Daily Mail have done. If you have a present, that's why they are so running to cover for the Kate. And a lot of it is not just covering for Kate, it's covering for themselves because they have participated in it. They knew it was a lie. They knew they were lying to the public and they allowed them to get away with it. And they covered for them. And that's what this is all about. Because if they don't cover up for the royals, they are now going to have to answer to why they didn't do something and why they also were participating in this. If these people didn't affect other people's lives, I don't care. It's like, look, if you use your money and you royal, I don't care. Go royal if you want to royal. But when you are using other people's money and you have your, you know, your stature have an effect on other people's lives, then it matters. It matters. And if they are not willing to tell the truth, they should be kicked out. There, there shouldn't be no way this should be tolerated at all in any sense of the word. The countries in the Commonwealth, I mean, how many, if you're going to lie about something like this, how much stuff they've lied to other, I mean, people, you know, countries that they don't really care about black and brown countries to begin with. How much lies have these people told to them? So, yeah, it's just, you know, and now, of course, Kate's thing is now memeing everywhere. As you can see, everybody is using it now. <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculous. It's like, they've, they've basically, this is, again, it's an own goal. And they've done this to themselves. So everybody now is like mocking them in every which way. And <laughs> as you can see, it's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. But again, they did it to themselves. They absolutely did this to themselves. So it's just, <laughs> and then Roy and Nika, I didn't even bother reading the article. I was like, this is nonsense. Roy and Nika is just lying again. Uh, exclusive, Prince and Princess of Wales plan to be clear and more open about the princess recovery from the abdominal surgery with Kate expected to uh, talk about it after she resumes the public duties next month. Uh, my big Sunday Times re, uh, Royal read, and at the right on the picture it says, Kate could address health mystery. <laughs> so is it planned to be or she could? We, like decide, you know what I mean? And he, is that the could is doing a whole lot of heavy lifting on this one here. It's not that she will or just she absolutely is going to talk about this, but she could, she could do it. I mean, you know, she could do it, I think, maybe, if she feels like it, maybe she could do it, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> and then, you know, at the top, it's like, she's expected to talk about it. Really? Did Kate tell you she was actually going to do it? No, of course not. Wayanika had no, she's nothing. She, whatever little ridiculous stuff the palace told her, she just, I mean, she might as well have just copied and pasted what the nonsense the palace told her. 
because that's pretty much what she does. I didn't even bother reading the article because I know that's what's in there. And if um, one of our squaddies dutifully, you know, took the, <laughs> she, she took the pain for all of us, I guess she read the article and then noted that there were 15 sources that are part of this article, 15 different sources, the palace source, the friend, the insider, all of which I will say is Lee Thompson, which we know. <laughs> No matter which way you try to cut that one, most likely that came from Lee Thompson. So I don't need to go in and try to figure out who all her 15 so supposed the sources are, which is what Nora Nika does. You know, chances are they all came from Lee Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, she plans to be more clear and more open. Yeah, you could be clearly lying. You could be openly lying. The point is not to be clear and open. The point is to be honest. That's the truth. That's to be tell the truth. That's what people need from you. I don't care about whether you're clear or open. I care about you being honest, about you telling the truth. That's what people want you to do. Because again, you could be like, I'm open, but still be lying about whatever it is you're supposedly open about. You need to stop lying. <laughs> that's the problem. That's why people don't trust you. So there you go. Um, what else is happening? And then, you know, it's so funny with the royal reporters with they, you know, they are all clutching their straw, clutching their pearls of, and claiming and all the people that are, how dare they attack the, 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 came, the Waleses? How could they be so mean and evil to them? How could they be talking about, um, the, 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 the Waleses marriage, how hurtful it is, how devastated that the Wales are, that people are just harping on their marriage. How could the, you know, the American, uh, late night shows be talking about and talking about uh, William and, and, and Rose in such an open manner for the world to see. And now the whole world is talking about William cheating on Kate. How could they do this? And they're all in the UK just moaning about the fact that how dare Americans be talking about William and Rose? How dare they talk about William having a love child? How dare? We just have to go back. If these people hadn't brought it up, nobody would be talking about it today. And who are the people that are talking about it? And who are the people that are moaning about it today? The likes of Richard Eden, Dan Wooten. I don't know if Dan Wooten, I think he's still you know, on Harry and Meghan nonsense. But the reason we are talking about and the people are talking about Rose and the, pe the reason why people are talking about William and his, um, you know, supposed relationship with Rose and his affair with Rose and love child and all of those things is because of their own royal reporters, their own royal reporters from their favorite tabloids. How did this all start? Richard Eden. The mystery of the Duchess of Cambridge alleged rural rivalry with, Marcia, uh, with Marquis of Ch Chumley former model wife, Rose Hansberry, and he did a whole article about the, the rivalry with Kate and William and it's because of the supposed relationship between William and Rose. He did that, and if you see at the bottom of the date, March 16, 2019. Oh, that was like two, you know, two, the anniversary of that would have been a few days ago. A couple, well, what is today, the 18, like two days ago? 2019, the first person to ever talk about this or at least put in the press about this supposed relationship with Rose and William is Richard Eden, the same one who is clutching his pearls today. As if you can look at the, the one on the um, top right, right article, March 23rd, a few days later, Dan Wooten picked up on it. Exclusive, an intriguing fallout between Kate Middleton and Rose Hansberry, one of her long-term best friends, has stunned royal insiders, the Duchess, has told Wills the former model needs to be phased out. And all the details about, you know, Will's supposed relationship with Rose, as you can see, he put Rose's picture right there, 2019. First time anybody heard about this, or at least it was in the press, is Dan Wooten and Richard Eden. And we all know, and we talked about that whole, how the palace covered that up. You know, we talked about it at length. Byline Times wrote a whole article about this whole business of the royal covering this up and throwing Harry and Meghan under the bus. Scobie, if you haven't read Endgame, covered this whole thing. Also about what they did to Harry to cover this up. 
And then if you look at, um, so on the 23rd, Dan Wooten brought it up. And then on the 23rd, later on that day, Richard Eden picked up on it. He says, intriguing, intriguing. I'm sorry, the little green is covering the couple, for, first two words. It says, intriguing follow-up by uh, Dan Wooten in The Sun to my item last weekend about Prince William's friend, Rose Chumley. And then the little blurb at the bottom says, even the writer who first set the cat among the pigeons, Richard Eden, was remarkably uh, coy in the Daily Mail diary item published last week in which he said the sources were telling him Kate seem, uh, seemed to see Rose as a rival for the title of Queen Bee of the Turnip Tops. And so this whole mess started with this whole thing, with this rival, um, rivaling base for, basically for William, and so the, to see these people now and their ilks at the Daily Mail and the Sun, uh, you know, attacking people and claiming that people are nasty to um, William and Kate over their marriage when they are the people that put it out there. The only reason that they are clutching their purse now and being upset is because other news outlets is like the in the U.S. are now making money from stories that they started up. So this whole nonsense about how dare they talk about William and Kate's marriage, well, the only reason they're talking about it is because these people put it out there. And it's been every few months, this whole thing comes up again. And it's like, look, Kens and Nibalis, the people that you all need to be going after are the ones that you know, you're in bed with right now from the Sun and the Daily Mail. They're the ones that put it out there. So don't be attacking other people about this and, and being upset that other people are talking about your marriage and thinking your marriage is falling apart. Because of Ray, because of Rose, because again, Dan Wooten and Richard Eden are the ones that put it out there. And even the whole thing is ridiculous, too, because again, look at again, Richard Eden, his article, Eden Confidential, Dame Mary Baird says reporting title reporting tittle tackle about the state of Harry and Meghan's marriage is what is important because it will serve as a what historical record. So it's okay for us to comment on Harry and Meghan's marriage. It's okay for us to spend all of 2023 claiming that Harry left Meghan and is, um, you know, living in a hotel somewhere in Santa Barbara. It's okay for us to be in on Meghan's hand because her ring was not her engagement ring was not her finger, and deem that they're getting divorced because it. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Why? Because it serves as a historical record. And again, look at the person who wrote this article, Richard Eden from the Daily Mail. Same newspaper, the Daily Mail. Marriage gossip, Kate and William were shaken and devastated at speculation about their marriage and intend to release new photo to mark Prince Louis' birthday next month. As a friend really, a reveal, Princess of Wales could use the public engagement to open up about health issues. Ridiculous. And look at their huge, um, their huge headline. Marriage gossip is cruel. Really? I thought y'all said back in October last year, when y'all were all up in Ari, Harry and Meghan's business, that marriage tittle tattle was for historical records. So all of a sudden it's historical records when Harry, when you're all up in Harry and Meghan's marriage, but when you're talking about William and Kate's, you know, <laughs> Will especially William's uh, possible infidelity all of a sudden is cruel. Unbelievable. Again, and why I said the majority of this stuff, the majority of this is just like <laughs> people are pointing out their hypocrisy. Because again, a lot of this stuff, a lot of um, the U.S., especially because I guess the you know the whales is are all about getting press from the U.S. And all of a sudden, you see all. I mean, even Sports Center, I think it was Sports Center, they're all mocking them. I mean, they're putting out all of these ridiculous videos mocking Kate and William, mocking their marriage, mocking the photos. I mean, it's just they are now the laughing stock that they wanted Harry and Meghan to be, especially with that you know that. Um, Roy, privacy tour or something nonsense from that cartoon that I could never even remember the name of the cartoon. But um, this laughing stock that they were all wishing on Harry and Meghan is what Kate and William, and they can't deal with it. They can't control the narrative anymore. They can't control the American press. So there we are. <laughs> they can't control the world press. They can't control Twitter. So they are used to having the narrative and they don't have it. And so that's why all of this, you know, <laughs> 
yeah it just yeah they martin this is exactly it they're getting exactly what they deserve they are getting exactly what they deserve and so yeah it just it's ridiculous and it, I mean, again, it's just the lies and the lies and the lies and the cover up and the double standard and everywhere. There's like they are telling people like, oh, my gosh, please stop. Please stop um, attacking our face. And then what? They will put out articles today about Megan being a narcissist and all of this stuff. It's just the same pattern over and over. And that's why nobody's buying it anymore. That's why Kate is getting what she's getting. And people are like, no, if you're going to attack Harry and Megan, then Kate is going to get it. So there. And, you know, talk about <laughs> even Pierce Morgan got in on it. You know, Jemima Goldsmith, some people said she, you know, she's not nice to Megan. Some people said she is. I don't know. I haven't paid attention to who she is. But I think this is the same woman who was on one of those um, British shows that if I'm if I remember this being the one that was going after Meg, I, I think it's the same, but it could be a different person. I didn't get to look into her very much. But anyway, she posted this thing. I fear that all um that Kate, as you can see from the top left, I fear that all the Kate and William jokes on the social media and especially on Stephen Colbert, um, who was the one in the US that was uh did the whole late night show <laughs> about uh well not the whole thing, but he did a whole sketch about William um cheating on Kate and having a love child and all of that stuff. He says, I um, I fear that all the Kate and William jokes on social media, and especially Stephen Colbert's material, are going to seem cruel and regrettable with hindsight. It is too easy to forget, especially on Twitter, that these are real people. And Piers Morgan, as you can see at the top, had the nerve, gall, and audacity to be retweeting this with, you know, pointing, you know, fingers down at this, like, yeah, people need to understand that they're real people. And of course, everybody went after him because again, what he did to, what he has done to Megan, you know? And so these people who are all touting Kate's humanity, people just have to remember this is the same, Kate, you know? And it's like, oh, please remember who Kate is. She's a human being. How could you do this to her? Well, we just have to remember that this is the same Piers Morgan, not only is one that, you know, spend the last seven years attacking Meghan, but in terms of the royal family, because he, you know, professing his love for the royal family. And I keep saying, no, this man does not love. He just wants attention. This is the same P.S. Morgan who's now, you know, retweeting about their humanity. It's the same one that called out the royals as racist royals before Meghan even got in there, as you can see at the top. And he says, you know, Meghan is married into a family that, to put it mildly, has a dodgy track record on race. And he went ahead in this video talking about the, the royals basically being ro racist. He is the one that called the royals racist. Harry and Meghan never did. Piers Morgan is the one that called them racist. He's also the one that named and <laughs> named and shamed Kate and the, the king, King Charles, as being the racist royals that Meghan talked about in the Oprah interview. Well, Meghan and Harry. He's the one that, you know, named them. This is the same P.S. Morgan that is now like, oh, remember their humanity, you know? It's like, if you want to go attacking people, if you want to go calling out people for it, oh, yeah, P.S. Morgan, hello. Nobody asked P.S. Morgan to out them. He's the one that wanted attention and outed them on his show that they are the racist royals. So, yeah, so it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. But again, British people having no self-awareness as usual. And uh, <laughs> oh yes, uh, our dear king in the future, in uh, well, you know, king in waiting, Prince William. He has been working so very hard the last two months. I mean, he is just, oh man, this man can't catch a break. He is just working from, you know, morning to evening from, you know, midnight straight to back to mid back to midnight i mean he has just been burning the the lamp at burnt ends and all of the things you can say about william except that king charles call him or at least those in the palace call him the 10 a.m to 4 p.m prince but that's another issue so he has been working so hard that you know this article came out it says the prince of wales will also pause public duties to support his family during the children's four-week holiday. 
says, um, Diana, um, despite fear over the Mother's Day picture, uh, the Mother's Day family photo, the Waleses are expected to release a new photo, whatever, for William, um, for little Louis's birthday. But, it, you know, if you look at the top of this little thing, I should have started from up there. It talks about Kate and it talks about she will not return to official engagement until April 17th. Apparently that's after it says when Prince George 10, Prince Charlotte 8, and Prince Louis 5 return to school after the Easter break. And then it talks about that the Prince of Wales will also pause public duties to support his family for the what? Four week holiday. Prince William who has done pretty much nothing for the entire year is now gonna take another month off <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, again, he's been working so hard. Photoshopping is really a hard job, you know, so he needs a four-week holiday on top of all the holidays he's had. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not my money paying for this guy, so you know what, you know, until British people rise up and be like, you know... <laughs> According to Royal Shady, who posted, it says, breaking news, the Prince of Wales, the Prince of Fails is set to take four weeks off. Meanwhile, his geriatric family members will continue to pound the pavement while he is MIA again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at the people that have been out there working, you know, whether it's uh, Princess Anne or the other royals that are just like, they're like 90. We saw one of them the other day, as we were talking about with his cane, could barely walk and he's out there doing his royal duty yet the future king is on the break again four weeks after pretty much doing nothing so unbelievable i'm gonna get in the chat for a bit in a in a in a second but um this also happened i hope for i, I don't know if our uh, squaddies in the uk have watched it i hope you did and i'd love to hear your take on it but um the uh, um uh, Princess Diana's brother, the Earl of Spencer, Charles or Charles Spencer, he did an interview with, uh, with the BBC talking about his life growing up and the horror of his life. And, and this, you know, King Charles talked about it when he went to school, I think it's Gordonston, the name of the school, the abuses and stuff that was happening. A lot of these uh, boarding schools in the UK have horrific past where they just abused the kids in their care. And he is one of them. And he talked about the sexual and physical abuse that he suffered when he was there. So, um, so he wrote a book about it. And I actually, I'm going to read that, but I have to get that book when he, when I, you know, I don't know if it's out yet. I have to check if it's out, but he was doing an interview about that, about the horror that he went through as a child in this boarding school. And so a part of that interview, they, um, Laura Katzenberg, who, uh, I think is Katzenberg is her name. Um, she, was asking him, yeah, Kuss, Kunzberg, not Krasenberg, Kunzberg. Um, she was asking him if um, there, basically she was claiming that the uh, so-called abuse that Kate is, is experiencing now, if it was the same as, as dangerous as when Princess Diana, what happened with Princess Diana? And he just promptly shut that right down. He's like, no, what Diana went through was so much worse. And then he just completely shut out anything about Kate, at least in the blurb. I don't know if further in the interview, he talked about it, but he just shut that down right away <laughs> and mentioned nothing else about it. And so um, this was from BBC. It says, uh, Diana's brother said the press uh, tension more dangerous than Kate's scrutiny. Princess Diana's brother, Earl Spencer, or the Earl of Spencer, uh, has told the BBC that uh, press attention suffered by his sister was more dangerous, hello, it killed her, than scrutiny surrounding the current Princess of Wales. But in an interview to be broadcast on Sunday, Laura Kissenberg, he also said that he worries about what happens to truth. And, um, you know, and of course, they wrote amid the cons conspiracy theories about Catherine. He also told me this week about the violence he and his sister suffered at home as children and has and he and his sister Diana were punished by the nanny in painful ways. He had just written a book, A Very Private School, about the shocking levels of violence and sexual abuse he had suffered as a young boy when he was sent to boarding school at the age of eight. And he talked about, you know, one of the nannies used to, I guess, when he and Diana do something that she felt was wrong, she used to knock their heads together like 
hit the, the both of their heads and knock it together. And he talked about how painful that was. I mean, the uh, that's, you, know, you look at some of the things these people do as adults and you can just tell the horrible life they had as children that plays a role, which it doesn't excuse what they do, but it, it gives you an insight into who they are now and why, you know, some of the things that they do is like when you look back at their lives, you're like, yeah, that tracks, you know, that definitely tracks. But I can't wait to read it. But it was very interesting how quickly he shut that down as they want to compare Kate Middleton's lying and, you know, bringing this on herself to what Diana faced. And it's just like he's like, no, absolutely not. But those, um, you know. And you look at some photos of him and Diana there, but it's just it's it's un it's unreal again when you look at some of the things these people have gone through, and so, and I and I'm still trying to find it um, where that quote came from, but apparently, and I don't know if it was from the interview where he talked about Prince Harry and how Diana would be so proud of who Harry has become that you know he basically is exactly what what a parent would want their child to be. And so it's very cool. And I'm trying to find out where I didn't bring it in because I couldn't find out where it came from. So I'm still trying to uh, find that out and confirm where that blurb came from. But it's very, very interesting. And finally, and I'll get into chat right after this, uh, we talked about this <laughs> at length. Uh, Robert Jobson wrote about it, uh, you know, in his book. Uh, Robert Lacey wrote about this. We talked about this. But one of the things they're talking about, just to switch a little bit back to William, it seems like William has still not paid up his uh, you know, his secret contract with the Daily Mail because they, you know, they're definitely going after him, especially um, as everyone knows he or what feels that he's th he threw Kate under the bus and letting her take all the rap for the photo gate or Franken photo as some people try to you know label it. And as you can see, this was yesterday. They are putting out about who William is. It's not like Harry hadn't told everybody who he is in spare. It's not like, you know, this hasn't been out there forever, but now they are putting this out there. It's kind of like they're soft. <laughs> if you can call this soft, but they are soft putting it out there that William is not who you think he is. And so again, this stuff has been out there since what, 2000, you know, what, 20, I think, um, Robert, um, uh, Jobson's book was in what, 2020 or something like that. 2021, when he put it out about William and it says, uh, not so sweet William. There was a time when the Prince was prone to rant and rave says leading Royal author. And can you guess the target of his anger? And again, this is the Daily Mail yesterday. Nonetheless, you know, it's a whole article. Then they, this is a clip from it. it says, nonetheless, William's stepmother, Camilla, was said to have been taken aback by his ferocity of his tantrums. He has proved no sweet William when roused, right, Lacey? That was in Robert Lacey's book. I think it was Band of Brothers, I think it was called or something like that. Um in the years after her 20, uh, 2005 marriage to Prince Charles, Camilla recounted to members of her own family and close friend her surprise at discovering how unexpected, discovering this unexpected side of Prince Charming. The boy, that boy's got a temper. Charles's wife was horrified at the ranting and raving that William unleashed on occasion against her husband in her presence. The rows were shattering by Camilla's account in the early days, with William doing the shouting and Charles submitting meekly on the receiving end. As she described it, William hold, held nothing back. It was a wrath, suggests Lacey, commiserate uh, with William's sense of himself as the future king. And we've talked about this numerous times. Uh, this is Robert Lacey's account. Again, Robert Jobson has it in there. How William likes others to show deference to him as the future king. He shows deference to no one. He sees himself as the, you know, he doesn't res basically respect his father. He never has. And um, again, William is not the only one with a temper. Charles obviously also has a temp really bad temper himself. Numerous account of it. Harry, to be fair, Harry also has a temper. Harry talked about it and also how therapy has helped him to be able to manage his temper and manage his anger. And one of the reasons he didn't hit William back when he, uh, William attacked him in his cottage at, at um at, at, um, at Kensington Palace at their cottage there, that he didn't hit back is because he has learned 
to manage his temper. He's learned through therapy to, you know, get it under control. And so, but this, you know, it's, it, again, this has been out there forever. So it's very interesting that yesterday the Daily Mail decided to, let's remind William of who he is, because we're going to start putting this, more of this stuff out there. And again, it's almost like they are sort of, um, you know, putting this out there in the public because whatever happened with him and K I, I believe there's got to be a reason why they're putting this out there yesterday, something that's been there forever, but they are putting it in there <laughs> loud and clear for William because I wouldn't be surprised this had something to do with why Kate is where she is right now. And so anyways... We're just going to leave Prince William and his anger issues. Again, it's one of the things that they're always attacking Harry, like, oh, Harry, you know, and his therapy and all of that stuff. We talked about this forever, that William has never, ever sought help for himself. He's never, ever, even though he's the one that, you know, they have the heads together and he's talking about to people about mental health. As we said numerous times, William and Kate has no business being the head of any mental health, anything, because these two know nothing about, you know, people and, and helping people with their mental health. These two need help and they have never thought, you know, they think of themselves as above getting help and would, you know, they were the ones that were attacking Harry and, and mocking Harry for getting help and uh, being able to. And so, yeah, it's just, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, Karen M says, Pedal now Angela is saying that uh, a friend of Kate has donated a kidney. They donated, well, okay, this is Angela Levin, so never mind. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I was going to say, Atlanta. this is Angela Levin, so never mind. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Angela Levin will just say just about anything. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, interesting. Um, let's see. Uh Rafaela says, uh, but Kate is no Princess Diana and is no Queen Meghan. I'm telling you, the, the idea that they would um, try to link what Kate, what uh, where Kate is and what's been going on with Kate now with what's going on, what went on with Princess Diana is so ludicrous. I mean, nobody asked Kate to go photoshopping herself and putting a fake photo out there. No one has told her to fake full. I mean, and again, if it was the first time, the second time, no, this is, she, who knows how long this girl has been faking photos. And again, she is the head of the Royal Photograph Photographic Society. She's the, not the head, but the patron, the Royal patron. So she should know the rules, especially, I mean, this is not just for your social media posts. You can Photoshop away if you were just posting it on Instagram or whatever, fine. But when you're giving that sort of thing to the press, and that is something that would be an, you know, historical document, that, I mean, hello. <laughs> you can't sit here and be like, oh, well, I didn't know the rules. You're the patron of the photographic society. That sh you should at least read the rules. That would be, you know, I mean, that would be a no-brainer that if you're going to be the patron, you at least know the rules if you're going to be, pro and especially the company, the the family or the family business you're a part of, you're the head of state. So you're going to have to, but again, they're so lazy. I'm sure they never read it. I wouldn't be surprised if she had no idea what the uh, photographic uh, agency that pulled their photo. And I'm sure she probably has never read it. So she has no idea what the rules are because these people are so lazy. You wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if she has never read it. So yeah, because again, they didn't never have to. This is what happens when you never had to face consequences. I say it all the time. This Kensington Palace and what is happening to the royal family is because they have never had to answer for what they have done. Nobody has ever held them accountable. People always wonder why I associate Israel with the royals and why I talk about the two things. There are so many parallels in what we're seeing, whether it's in with Israel in the Middle East or the royals. There are so many parallels. And one of the big ones is accountability. When nobody has held you accountable for things, you just feel you can get away with anything. When nobody would stand up and say, no, what you're doing is wrong. That is unacceptable. And you have to change. Then you're going to keep doing stuff like this. 
And then all of a sudden, when people start calling you out, it's like, oh my gosh, no, I'm the victim. I'm the victim. No, 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 I'm the victim. Meanwhile, you've been lying, scheming, and manipulating this whole time. People just haven't, and it's the same pattern. It's the same pattern where you see how America works with Israel. It's the same pattern. Israel is allowed and has been allowed for 70 years, 75 years to get away with the murder of Palestinians and completely um, have them in an open air prison for all of this time. Nobody has said a word. Everybody has been covering for them all of this time. That's why they would post when people are, you know, we are shocked to see them post their crimes on, like literally post their crimes on social media. There's a whole Twitter of them posting their war crimes blatantly and laughing and joking and dancing with their crimes right in the back of them. And they have no nothing. Why? They've never been held accountable. They've never been held to pay for their crimes. So that's why we are where we are with that. It's the same thing with the royals. No one will hold them accountable. The fact that all of these press outlets are now like, oh my gosh, we're going to pull and kill this. And it became such a big deal because for all of these years, nobody has checked. <laughs> nobody has checked. And no matter how many people have called them out, they have still like, oh no, no, they're reputable without really looking in and investigating to see what these people are doing, if what they're doing is right. And now all of a sudden they are being held accountable. And now it's like, oh, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. Oh, please, please, please stop, stop, you know, calling me out. It was just a simple mistake. Like, no, it's not. You've been lying and scheming, manipulating all of this time. People have just been bowing and kissing your feet and not calling you out. And so now we're in a different age where everything they do is going to be scrutinized. They still haven't gotten it yet. They still think they control the narrative. To this day, they still think they do. Unbelievable. Same patterns, the same thing with Israel. It's less, that's why I keep connecting because the, the patterns are the same. So uh, let's see. Veronica Jade says, is it is it wrong that I think Charles brought his son's rage on himself? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not wrong at all. It's like, you know, and again, it's King King Charles is a person that he doesn't like to deal with things. He does not like to deal and he lets things just grow and grow and grow and him not dealing with it. And, and it goes back to him. They, they just his mother is the same way. She's a conflict avoider. The, the narrative has always been that um, the person that would work through all these things has been Prince Philip. She is a conflict avoider. She never wants to deal with anything. And Charles has basically taken that on where he, where all of this drama is happening in his family. His family is literally falling apart around him. And he doesn't say anything. He goes and hides. And he leaves it for his people to do. And they don't seem to know what to do. And it just, and everybody's looking at it. It's like, why, why isn't somebody doing anything? Because his whole life he's been running and hiding. And nobody has decided to, oh, I need help. I need to go find someone to help me figure this stuff out. So, yeah, I mean, I, look, are there things that William should be angry about from his childhood with Charles? Yes, very much so. But if Charles was a person that is not, you know, again, he's stunted. They, 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 their growth has been stunted. His his whole life, his growth has been stunted. He has never learned to. He has never learned to be able to conflict, um, to you know, resolve conflict. So instead of dealing with his children and really working through together with them, the hurt, the anger, all of the things that they feel, whether it's you know their broken marriage and then the loss of their mother and all of that stuff, instead of working through that with them, he ran away and buried his head, buried his head in his work, and left them with their nannies to resolve their own issues. Harry, thank God, is, is, you know, he's still a process and he's resolving his. William just hasn't. And all William is, is just a bundle of anger. And that is a thing that people are pointing out over and over in, you know, even though they're saying it, they're not really holding him accountable to, the, to all of his outbursts. But he has never resolved it. And the same thing with him. He's rather go hide and pretend he's okay and then blow up at somebody. Would I be shocked if it is one of it is one of those anger issues why Kate is where they are right now? I wouldn't be surprised at all. 
So yeah, no, I agree with you. Charles brought all of this on himself. If they had worked through stuff, then this mess wouldn't happen. They'd learn how to talk to each other. Um, let's see. Anime says, William, it was spiteful from a child, especially at Harry. William did not treat Harry well amongst his friends at school, but Harry protected him always. Very true. And you can see William, even as a child, there was so much anger. There are photos of him hitting Charles. There's photos of um, videos, actually. Uh, Diana, I think it was Diana was talking about William attacking her, going after her. Um, and she's like, especially when I think when the marriage ended, he was screaming at her. And um, there was a one where I think it was their bo bodyguard, their, their security officer, you know, she even said to him that uh, she does not like him um, because of his behavior, basically, which she's talking about. Of course, Robert Jobson took that, twisted it and claimed that it was a nanny said that to Harry, which was not what the original thing was. But yeah, it just, this guy, he needs help. He's going to hurt somebody. If he hasn't done it already, he's going to seriously hurt somebody with his anger because he's not dealing with it. Um Gwen is like, I don't care. <laughs> She's like, I really don't care about Kate and the other Royal Vipers. Yeah, you know, totally understand. Totally understand. Uh, Veronica J said, I'd be glad to shut down the UK press comparing Princess Diana and Kate. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm glad he shut it down. Oh, yeah, he shut that right down. <laughs> he shut that right down. Again, I don't know. So if any of our... um squaddies in the uk side i think it, it, it aired yesterday on the bbc so i'd love to hear and hopefully you get like you know we get access to it so yeah that would be really cool uh sylvia hi sylvia says i bet earl spencer wanted to say megan had suffered more than mean girl kitty <laughs> i mean if there is any comparison I, that would be the comparison you know and so i mean to the point where megan had paparazzi chasing after her too so yeah if you know i don't again i don't know i i only saw the clip and i don't know what happened for the rest of the interview so again i hope somebody watched it or at least they give us access to see because i really want to and i'm definitely going to read that book so yeah let's see who else is chatting um Black Queen says, I guess those people figured the family don't give a darn about their kids so they're free to do whatever to them without repercussions. I am not sure if that means the people of the photo you're talking about. I'm not specifically sure. So if you want to explain Black Queen, <laughs> that would be great. Uh, let's see. Um, Karen, hey, Karen Warner says, I'm so glad uh, Charles Spencer shut her down when they were trying to compare Princess Diana's treatment to Kate. Princess Diana and Princess Meghan was not perfected uh, was not perfected. Kate is. I'm not sure I understand that part, but uh, yeah, I totally agree. I'm glad he shut that right down. He doesn't seem to be the the one thing with Charles Spencer is Charles Spencer does, is not a fan of the royal family at all. He is not a fan of theirs, and so he does not feel them at all. So he rarely talks about them. He's rarely. I remember. Um, even with the coronation, he was doing an interview and he's like, um, they were asking if he was going. He's like, I don't expect to. He's like, I'm not really into the royals. He's totally. And if you know anything about his family, his family has been around long before the Windsors. And so they are really old money and old, I mean, old uh, society people, lo much longer and more respected, I think, than the royals. So yeah, he's just, yeah, they're it's not into them at all so <laughs> yeah. um so it's very very interesting very interesting guy um let's see and says the european royals are definitely looking at the future royals fail badly how could w and k know they can face these kings and queen King Charles is totally uh, totally embarrassed. Hope he apologized to Harry. Um, yeah, <laughs> definitely need to apologize to Harry. 
uh, well, it's so funny with the European royals because uh, the Netherlands, what's this, King Willem was mocking Kate. Um, I think he said something about uh, his photo not being photoshopped or something. So <laughs> it's just, it's all people are making. I mean, everything they wish for Harry and Meghan is just what has fallen on them. And I think that's why the press is so upset because, again, this is what they were they have done everything in their power to get this to happen to the Sussexes. And it has fallen under two people who they have been protecting. And now they don't know how to protect them from it. So it's just, it's just very funny that, you know, be careful what you wish for in others because you just may fall into it. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Sylvia says, honestly, I never felt these two, William and Kate, would work anyway after the Queen transitioned. Before Meghan came along, the tabloids wrote about their laziness. Very, very true. Yeah, work shy Willie and, uh, and uh, weighty Katie, that whole thing. I mean, you know, Harry explained a little bit about, you know, if Harry didn't feel some of the some of the narrative was true because only because, as we know, King Charles wanted all the press for himself. So he took the ma majority of the um, the work because that gave him more press. And uh, he said that, you know, him and William could only do what the Queen and Charles allowed them to do. So people were calling them lazy, but it was a, some of it was not their fault in that if they did more, then it would have been, you know, them overshadowing Charles. And so a lot of what they did had to do with how, how, how much they were given to do. That doesn't, you know, <laughs> that does not absolve William for uh, uh, obvious laziness, especially even when he was working as an air ambulance uh, pilot. Some of his co-workers were calling him out for not doing as much or working as much as he was supposed to. So all of that there, even when then he was still lazy. So, um, but, you know, Harry sort of gave him a bit of a break. <laughs> you know, he didn't have to, but Harry is generous in giving him a, him a break about that. So, yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, my gosh, Al Jazeera. <laughs> But even now, just Harry is talking about that family mess. I'm telling you, everyone is talking about it. I was really, I, I was, I broke out laughing when I saw um, Sports Channel. <laughs> the Sports Channel, they were making a fun about it. It was just so. <laughs> Everybody is now like, "Where is Kate? Where is Kate?" But the thing about this too is, look. The royal, this the flip side of all of this narrative, even though it's negative is attention is attention. Even negative attention is attention. And Kate and William have never been this popular and people have paid attention to them as now. And the royals, are, they're all about attention. They're all about fame. They're all about people, you know, paying attention to them. That's their whole thing, how popular they are. And right now, the last two weeks, they're literally more popular than our faves because more people are tuning in to what, where is Kate? What's going on in the Royals? Is she dead? Did they kill her? What, what is Charles? Is he dead? Is he have cancer? Did she really have surgery? I mean, that is really the narrative, Ben, in the last two weeks, especially. So they have never been as relevant as they've been in as they have been in the last two weeks. So even though it's been negative, they have been more popular now than they've ever been. So again. Publicity is publicity. Even negative publicity is publicity. So while on the flip side is negative, they must be reveling in the fact that oh, we got attention. We are popular because, again, that's all they want, popularity. And this feeds into that popularity. So they could also be playing up on this. The, you know, where is Kate narrative is keeping her in the spotlight, her name in the spotlight. So by the time she, you know, people see her, It'll be a big event. Oh my gosh, Kate, everyone is going to tune in to when the ever the first time they see Kate because they've played into this where is Kate narrative. So they can also be feeding off of this. So again, even though it's negative, it's attention and that's what they're about. They're not about integrity. They have no integrity. And if you're a squatty, you've known that you don't know, look into them for integrity because they don't have any. So it's not like they have to like think about their, it, although some people still like to be like, oh, no, 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 but the sanctity of the world. No, they have no integrity. You know, for them, it's all about popularity and they have it. 
they have the popularity right now. So yeah. So we have to be careful even as much as we're talking about this. We still have to be careful in the fact that, you know, yes, we keep an eye on them, but not allowing that to be dominant and then dominate our faves work and the things that, you know, what we're about. So even this, I'm like probably one of the last times I'm going to be talking about this because I'm not here to give them any popularity for their nonsense. So, yeah. Um, let's see. A couple more before we end. Uh, um, Angela says they're now misquoting uh, Charles Spencer saying that uh, that he compares what's happening to Kate to Diana and he literally said the opposite of course they will of course they will because they want Kate they always want Kate to be the victim they are even though they attack Megan claiming that with Megan one they always because Kate has to be the one you know she has to be the one that cries she has to be the one that people feel sorry for she has to be the one that's like oh how dare they yeah they attack our precious sweet darling Kate that's what they want you know and so of course they're going to manipulate what Charles Spencer said too because she has to be the one she has to be the white princess that cries unbelievable um Gwendolyn says they explained the lack of photo of Kate at the farmer's market on Good Morning on Good Morning show as the local fer folks observing her privacy. They must think people are brainless <laughs> to believe that nonsense. Yeah, they actually do believe people are brainless because why people have been behaving like they're brain brainless and accepting the nonsense and they've been accepting this nonsense for years. And again, this is what happened. This is the consequence of not holding these people to account for their lies. If people were calling them out for their lies years ago, they would not have to be today in the year of our Lord 2024 expecting people to believe this nonsense. They literally do believe people are stupid. They don't respect their subjects at all in any sense of the word. And that's why if you respect people, you would never ever do that stuff because you, res you respect the fact that they have a brain and they just don't think you have, you know, people have one. Because again, people believe the nonsense of the press, their mouthpieces in the press. So of course they think people would believe the nonsense. Of course they would lie about photos. Of course they'll put out false statements all the time because they just think people are stupid. And so now people are waking up and thank goodness, <laughs> make us squatties our job a little bit easier trying to talk about this stuff. So yeah, uh, Veronica says, William is, <laughs> yes, William is plain lazy. Yep, that's definitely for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, some that I didn't get. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, uh, Joe Garcia says, uh, oh, she's talking to Karen, says, I, I remember Harry saying he did not want to play the games. Um, not sure what the first ones, so I'm not sure which one you're referring to, but yes, Harry does talk about, you know, not playing the, especially Royal Reporter, uh, Royal Reporter games. So yeah. Um, Gwen says, I really don't believe Charles has cancer. I, I don't believe anything these people said at all. And I am, I am very willing About these people say, do I believe they could lie faith in them, in them, these people at all in any sense of the word? And so yeah. Um Joan Hickey says Kate has to di disappear and pretend to be sick to be popular. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, again, without it, then they will have to deal with the, you know, remember the racist royals? Because, again, Scobie's book came out in what? Was it November? And then a little bit after that, they went into their break. 
yeah, they would have to deal with the racist royal issue. And again, as we saw, I mean, Oprah's interview was what, 2021? Nobody has dealt with it. Other than Megan writing Charles a letter, which this whole, this is why this whole racist royal thing came up again in Scobie's book. But they haven't, they, they have not dealt with it. They have not sat there and wrestled with it and worked it through as a family, quote unquote family, and try to work, work it through. They haven't. And instead of dealing with it, no, it's, you know, they, they, they rather it's like, okay, let's distract. And that's why we are where we are. So, yeah. I'm at the place where it's like, girl, unless you show me where you had surgery and, you know, I'm not, you know, she doesn't have to, I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't think people would, but I don't believe it. And even worse from her mouth, I just don't believe anything they say. So, yeah. Uh, Reba says, it's all a game to these people. I'm over it. Who cares about William and Kate? I'm too bored of their insanity. You know what? You're right. <laughs> You're right, Reba. Absolutely. Let's see. Final one says, but I think some people forget that the palace, uh, they forget that the palace long game, the squad helped with uh, with this where, where is Kate? Has any squaddy talked about Sally Bedell says about Megan this last weekend? I mentioned it briefly at the top about Sally Bedell, um, who is an American writer, actually. I read a couple of her books, one about the queen and one about Charles, before I realized she was just this racist royalist, um, basically claimed that Meghan is just like Wally Simpson, that she is narcissistic, and that just like um, Edward, who Wallace married, that um, Har Harry and Edward are weak men who married domineering, narcissistic women. I mean, it's so sickening. And this is in the same paper like The Telegraph and others who were over the weekend begging people to stop attacking Kate. And so, of course, everyone is calling them out for their hypocrisy about, uh, you know, wanting us to look at Kate's humanity. And that came, they wrote an article like, you know, about, Kate's humanity, and three hours later, literally three hours later, they put out an article claiming that, you know, calling Megan narcissistic and, and, and domineering, basically, you know, the racist black woman trope, basically, and claiming that she's just like Wally Simpson and all of this stuff. And it's just, it's the same sickening thing. And again, the same people want, you know, and they're crying about Kate's treatment. And think nothing about hum the humanity of Megan. So it just, it, it's a sickness in this country. And they are the ones that would claim to you, no, 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 we're not racist. No, we're, you know, the least racist country in the UK. I mean, in, in Europe, we're the least racist. We're not racist. And it's like, yeah, you are. Yes, you are. You are sickeningly racist. It's just, it's sickening. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Karen M says the Royal family's website guides you now directly to the Sussex website. Oh, really? Okay. I haven't been on there in a long time. So, okay. So I guess you click on it and it, it clicks you to wait. It clicks you to the Sussex's page on their website or Sussex.com. Where does it lead you to? I haven't gone on there. That's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, services of royal family is about a popularity, and I guess Kate will be most googled at the end of this year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you if pe if this keeps up, then yes, if the, you know, I'm assuming maybe she'd want to stay off for the rest of the year, have this whole where is Kate to the end of the year to keep her popularity up. But very interesting. Oh, it does lead to Sussex.com. Very interesting. I have to go check it out. Thank you, Karen M. So breaking news from Karen M. Royal Family website leads straight to Sussex.com. Interesting. Thank you, Karen M., for this breaking news. Very, very interesting. Um, so I guess that's their signal of approval that uh, Sussex.com is approved by the royal family or Buckingham Palace, at least. Very interesting. So, yeah. Um, 
Sylvia says, I'll be sending a letter to CNN about Sally, Sally Bedell since they bring her on as a royal reporter. Oh, wow. I've only seen her there once. I didn't realize it was a regular thing that she comes on. But yes, that would be, I would say a lot of us need to do that. I would write one too, because that is disgusting. It is truly, truly disgusting. This is American woman. And it's just like, mm, gross, utterly gross. So yeah, um, let's see. Uh, John Hickey says, Google the for the wrong reason. Despite this, she still won't be top. Oh, okay. So, oh, so you checked. Okay. I know squatties usually check. And um, I mean, I would assume the last week uh, she probably is on top because just about everybody and their brother was like on the Kate and having all the conspiracy theories out there. So who know? Maybe it's just on social media and not, you know, on like Google or something. Could be. Who knows? Uh, let's see. Um, Reva says Charles and Willie are weak men who hid behind women like their mitch mistresses. Harry's not controlled by Megan. Megan loves her man being a man, not a wimp like Chuck and Willie. I mean, the funny thing with this is you literally have a situation where Kate, whether she's the one who did the actual photoshopping or not, William is the one that is the head of the household. He is the heir to the throne. He literally let his literally kicked his wife under a bus and let her take the fall. And this woman is sitting there calling Harry weak. I mean, hello. When has Harry allowed Meghan to take the fall for anything? Harry sat there and took his family, stood up for his family against his um for his family against the royals, his wider family, and took his family there, start a whole life. And this is somebody who you call weak. Meanwhile, the heir to the throne literally kicked his wife under a bus and hid behind her so she takes the fall for what they did? I mean, hello. <laughs> Does she even know what... Like, I, I, on, I, These people's thinking is just... I, I don't understand it. Um, Joy says, Sally Bedell is trying to sell a book for an American to say that about Megan. Who does she not... Who she does not know is so disgusting. You see a lot of them like that, like the Megan Kellys of the world and even uh, Candace, whatever, she, the one who uh, kicks her own people to just to get in with white people. Candace Owens, I think her last name is. I mean, you see them do this sort of thing all the time. Cloud chasing, you know, trying to make money off of hating Megan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's unbelievable. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, exactly. These people use Harry and Meghan for clicks. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. And Gwenny's like, they use Harry and Meghan for clucks, which they did too. <laughs> yes. And um, uh, Joy says, I hope no one buys for Sally Bedell's book. I, yes. We need to just pay that, pay it dust as we've done the others who've written nasty books thinking thinking that they can you know stir up controversy and then people buy it and nobody has been buying them so we will pay Sally Bedell dust so there you go it's the last time I'm talking about Sally Bedell so um uh, let's see Rhonda says, bad popularity isn't good for business no one wants to work with the individuals that are trustworthy Harry and Meghan have impeccable business relationships and can't be topped by KP's lies. You know, in a perfect world, this would be true, but there are some people who they don't mind people being, you know, <laughs> unethical. They would work with them. Uh, Fox and all of the others, yes. They would work with them. And I mean, look at who is running for president right now. You know what I mean? You have the orange one, one of the just the most... It's, I can't even, I, what is the adjective? Yeah, we have people still supporting him. We have Republicans who bow to this man's feet, you know? So it just, you know, hello. There's an audience for everyone, I guess. So yeah, um, un unbelievable. You would think that their unethical behavior would drive people away. But again, a lot of people are drawn to publicity, not so much being ethical. They are drawn to publicity, people who have the most attention, because they will get more attention, they will get more people tuning into them, no matter how unethical they are. Again, Donald Trump, good example <laughs> of one. So, um, 
Uh, Kathy says, good going past. <laughs> a modern day comedy of errors. Shakespeare, you would be proud. I know, right? <laughs> totally. Totally proud. <laughs> So anyway, bye Church Nelly. Um, whatever you're doing, have a fantastic day. Oh, here she is. Thank you, um, Black Queen, for pointing it out. Uh, it says, great podcast for today. Have a marvelous Monday. All smooches. Bye. Have a fantastic day. And I am going to bid you all adieu myself. Uh, thank you all for hanging out with me. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. I forgot about this. We were on that so much. Suits is still there, you guys. Ending on a positive. Suits is still there. It is ranked number seven. I mean, this is something we were talking about since last spring. Well, since last June, early summer, last June, Suits is number seven and Nielsen's rating. I mean, Suits is not going anywhere. They, I think they've started casting the new Suits. I think LA, I don't remember what it's called. I think it's maybe Suits LA or maybe a different name. Don't remember. They have started casting it already. Uh, they have announced a couple of, I think two or three people who are casting it. And so, but regular Suits is still on Netflix and they were still doing great. It's number seven. I mean, hello. They had, uh, um, what, the last Nielsen it had was 682 million minutes viewed. I mean, this thing is going forever. So congratulations, Suits guests. Man, they are awesome. So anyway, thank you to our awesome moderators, Trish, Nelly, Lydia, uh, Washington, Karen M, Cookies and Cream, Black Queen. You are awesome as usual. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. And to our awesome Two Cents crew who support the channel on a monthly basis. You are amazing. Thank you all so much for everything that, that you do. And for all of you, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when we drop a video. And like and share the video, please. Help us to build this channel. And uh, yeah, and join the channel if you're able. That would be awesome. So thank you, guys. Have a fantastic day, and I shall chat with you later. Bye. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,